Moving on to the next question. So we have a function negative 3x squared plus 5x plus 3, and we have to find an algebraic expression for the average rate of change from t equals 2 to another point h units away. Then we find the instantaneous rate of change at the t value of 2. So pretty similar to questions we've been doing before, but just worded a little bit differently. So notice how we're finding the average rate of change from this t value of 2 to another t value that is h units away. So it would be like 2 plus h, right? So at this t value of 2, and then at this t value, 2 plus h units away. So we have to find the average rate of change on this interval. So how would we do that? Well, we know average rate of change is what? It's going to be the y value, the value of the function, at this t value, so it's going to be f of 2 plus h minus the value of the function at this t value of 2, so it's going to be minus f of 2, all over 2 plus h minus 2. Notice how we can simplify this uh, denominator. So we'd have f of 2 plus h minus f of 2 and then the twos will cancel out, so this will be all over h. Notice how this now is just the difference quotient, right? It's the same thing. If you remember, the way that we derived the difference quotient formula is finding the average rate of change at the t value we're working with and at another t value or x value h units away, right? So notice the twos cancel out in the denominator and we're left with this h which is the same as the difference quotient, but we're still finding the average rate of change between these two points, right? So f of 2 plus h is going to be what? Well, we've got to plug in 2 plus h for all of the x values in the function. Usually, I do it on the side, but I'm just going to do it all in one step. So I'm going to give myself a little more room here. So if we plug in 2 plus h for all the x values, We'll have negative 3, 2 plus h squared plus 5 times 2 plus h plus 3. So this whole expression here is basically f of 2 plus h. And then what's f of 2 going to be? Well, 2 squared is going to be 4 times negative 3, negative 12, plus 10 is negative 2, plus 3 is going to be 1. So f of 2 is going to be 1, so we're going to be subtracting 1. And I think that's correct. So 2 squared, negative 12, plus 10. Yeah, so f of 2 is 1. And then this is still going to be all over h. And now notice how we can do a lot of simplifying. Notice that this 3 minus 1, that will be 2. So we'll leave that for the end. This uh, 2 plus h squared, that's going to be what? Well, you got to FOIL that out. Right, so it's going to be 2 plus h times 2 plus h. When you FOIL all that out, you'd end up with 4 plus 4h plus h squared. Let's uh, distribute the 5 inside the bracket. So we'd have 10 plus uh, 5h. And then 3 minus 1, that's just going to give us 2. And then that's going to be all over h. So now... Um, Let's distribute this negative 3 inside the bracket. Notice how this 10 plus 2, these are like terms, and those would be 12. And notice how this negative 3 times 4 would be negative 12. So the 12s are going to cancel out, right? And then uh, we'll have negative 3h squared, right? When we multiply this negative 3 and the h squared there. Negative 3 times 4h would give us negative 12h plus 5h, those would be like terms, so that would give us um, negative 7h, right? Negative 12h plus 5h is negative 7h. This is still going to be all over h. And now notice how we can factor out an h from the numerator. Let me uh, erase this here. Make it a little smaller. So we'll have uh, negative 3h minus 7. This is going to be all over h. H is cancel out. So our final answer is uh, negative 3H minus 7. So that is 
the expression for the average rate of change, the simplified expression for the average rate of change between 2 and 2 plus h for this function. Right, so that's the answer to the first part. Then we have to find the instantaneous rate of change at a t value of 2. Well, to find the instantaneous rate of change at a t value of 2, we do the same process, but then at the end what we do is we let h approach 0 because we want h to be very small. We want this uh, next t value to be very close to 2. So this h has to be really small, so we could even plug in 0 for h. And when we do that, we would end up getting negative. 7. So that would be the exact instantaneous rate of change for this function at a t value of 2. So that's the answer to the first part of the question. That's the answer to the second part.